let's look at um, a trig identity. Okay. So there's lots of trig identities. Um, we're just going to look at one and really, um, really the most important one. Or, uh, important is probably the wrong way to say it, but the most commonly used one. So, so let me introduce you to, um, let's or remind ourselves for this one right here. We have x squared plus y squared equals r squared, right? This is our Pythagorean identity, right? Or Pythagorean theorem is what we've called it before. But what you got to remember is with trig, we, before we used to use uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? But then we introduced it to the coordinate plane, right? We define this as their x value, our y value, and then we'd have a radius, right, for a particular angle, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to go one step further um, and if you remember from the unit circle, the radius is always 1, right? Because that's what our unit circle is, a radius of 1. We also know that the x value is equal to the cosine of theta. And we also know that the sine is equal to y. Okay, that's true for our unit circle. All three of those things are true. The radius is always 1. And the sine and the cosine are always, uh, the cosine is always x and the sine is always y. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sub those in. And so what I can get is cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1 squared because the radius is 1. And then I'm just going to, you typically see it written, when you see it in your books written, they usually tend to write it like sine squared plus cosine squared. Same thing, doesn't matter which one comes first. But typically in books you'll see it sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Because 1 squared is 1. So this is our Pythagorean identity. Okay. Um, so what we know here is if I see a 1, I can replace it with sine squared plus cosine squared. It's kind of weird why I would want to do this. You'll see as we start to do some trig equations how this makes sense. But I want you to, we got to look at a couple variations of this. Okay. So this is our main, this is our Pythagorean identity right here. So we have basically two versions that we use quite a bit. We have sine squared, uh, sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta. And we also have cosine squared, cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. And so basically I'm just solving to get those. So how do I get the first one? I subtracted cosine squared to both sides. Right? You see, I would just do, you know, minus a cosine and then minus a cosine squared on both sides. And what's really cool about this is now is everywhere that I see a sine squared, I can replace it with this. And once again, it's kind of a weird reason why. You'll see as we start to do some equations. But it allows us to convert things between sines and cosines. All right. So just kind of rewriting. So in your notes somewhere, have this, and you'll and you want to have this as we do our um, our equations today. So we have just kind of rewriting them: sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. We also have sine squared equals one minus cosine squared and cosine squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta, okay? So we want to keep, we need to have all of those. We need to memorize them. You, we'll use them so much that it won't be too hard to do, but you got to remember that is our Pythagorean identity.